All right, everybody. Welcome to uh, this uh, webinar here called Routing Documents for Approval in EPDM. This is uh, the second webinar of today. Um, hope that some of you guys had a chance to uh, to catch Kevin's webinar a few hours ago uh, in regards to EPDM versus Windows. Um, if you didn't get a chance, it will shortly be uploaded to our uh, website, so you can definitely catch it up there. Um, so then, going to jump into talking about uh, routing documents through EPDM. So EPDM, some of you guys know, they do a lot of uh, neat stuff. Um, um, really a great data management system. And one of the things you can do in there is that you can, you know, you can not only lock down your documents in a vault, but you can really control the direction of how your data is kind of like sent through through the system. And that's what we're kind of like going to take a look at today. So jumping into this. Um, Looking at, 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 at data, um, you know, it's, it's interesting, we started out, you know, maybe early 90s, uh, mid 90s, started using data, cat data and stuff like that, and it was not really a big problem, right, because, uh, you know, we had a few file types, kind of like had to, to manage and stuff like that, but in today's age, we, um, we really got a lot of different file formats. The neat thing is uh, that EPDM can handle pretty much all of them. It, 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 can handle, um, I think it's like 450 different types of file formats that can be read through the eDrawings uh, viewer. So, you know, all the different data that you have uh, fits right inside of EPDM. Um, and of course, uh, you know, for us here, um, we, we're mostly thinking about uh, our CAD data too, right? I mean, that's what we kind of like, you know, EPDM has an, a neat add-on that runs uh, right inside SOLIDWORKS. But all the other stuff you see here, your PDFs, your X, uh, your Excel files and, and Word documents and all those stuff, all those uh, fit right inside the EPDM uh, world and, and can be managed and controlled and stuff like that. Now, an interesting thing is when we talk to uh, to some of our customers um, and we kind of like talking about how many files do you have, like I said, we started using this in maybe early to mid-90s, um, it's not uncommon for even, should we say, smaller manufacturing places to have hundreds of thousands of files, right? Hundreds of thousands of files that is managed uh, out in, in a Windows environment in some kind of a folder structure. What means that when we kind of like looking at this here with a little, you know, um, filing cabinet and we got our file uh, different data, I mean, in the real world, if we looked at our, uh, at our data, um, it looks more like this, right? Um, there's a lot of files out there. If you got a hundred thousand files floating around, on some kind of a server out there, um, I'm not just talking about you know protected by a vault, um, but I'm also also talking about reusing data, finding data, keeping all this data kind of like you know uh, tight and, and controlled, uh, and that's really where EPDM really is really really powerful in in that regard. Now, neat thing about this with all these different files, all these different documents that you guys uh, gotta keep track of is that EPDM have these workflows that you can route your documents through uh, workflows. So just kind of like just to kind of like draw up a quick little workflow scheme that, that I think is most standard for most um, companies, I just kind of like took Frank's machine shop. Um, you know, many of our customers are smaller shops that are kind of like grown into to, to, to mid-size or bigger, but you know, just starting out with something a little basic. Um, so you might get, you know, an incoming order, right? That might be an email or a phone call or a fax, something like that. And, and that order comes in. Many times what it does is it kind of like takes a step backwards, right? It might have to go to management. It might have to go, if it's a smaller company, it might go back to the boss and just be like, hey, you know, we received an order from, from this company, the one we quoted three weeks ago, um, and um, we are kind of like ready to, to go, and you normally need you know, okay for somebody like that. When that happens, then it many times can send to maybe a project manager, or again, if it's a small shop like Frank's, then maybe it's, uh, you know, the same guy who came in with the, with the paper in the first place. But you go to a project manager, somebody who's gonna kind of like oversee this, this part that needs to be manufactured. From that point, you might go to the design group. Um, again, in Frank's machine shop, it might just be Bob who's sitting you know, the seat of SOLIDWORKS down in the dungeon down there. But it goes to the design group, 
um, and, and they might have to, to draw something up from a PDF document, they might have to design some fixturing or, or even model up or design a part, and they probably also are going to create uh, some different drawings, uh, maybe some inspection documents, stuff like that. Uh, when the design group is kind of like done with that, then they go back to the project manager, right, and says, all right, you know, we got this done, um, and um, when the project manager gets it, well, then he uh, maybe contacts manufacturing, right, and says, all right, hey, we have this project, we got to like, start machining this, and uh, they then get the information from the design group, of course, the data, the, the models, the drawings, inspection sheets, stuff like that. They make the parts, and it gets sent to inspection, right? And uh, hopefully it don't go this way. I just had to put that one in there. It never goes that way, right? It always goes this way. Um, and when first piece have been inspected, everything looks good, then inspection normally go again to the project manager and says, hey, it looks good. Who hopefully gives the green light, and then we are rolling on with, with our pr process, right? With manufacturing, some of the part goes through inspection. But it, hopefully it, it ends in shipping. Uh, and in shipping, then it goes to the customer, right? That's kind of like how the workflow goes. If there's any, any owners who's watching this webinar, then you, this is the point where you're looking for this one, right, when we get to this point. Um, but a standard workflow like this, um, you know, is, is, is pretty basic. Um, now, one of the things that goes on with this workflow here is that there's a lot of communication in this. Um, a lot of, of kind of like going back and forth and going around and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, like I said earlier, a lot of our customers are smaller. They started out small and now they're kind of like grown up. And, and this whole communication thing has just been kind of like a natural thing. It may have never was never laid out as kind of like a workflow. Um, but, but that's really what happens in the daily routine, right? And, and, and it's always kind of like when somebody goes on vacation, it's always a little bit scary because which one of these communication bridges are not broken and what did that person do and stuff like that. Uh, and this is where EPDM can, can really be a great, great help, a great assistant. So, you know, if this was a car we had designed, this workflow would have been a lot bigger, right? But, I mean, even for something standard as a small machine shop or a small factory place or something like that, there is still a workflow, there's still a way that documents gets sent through to get to the final place. What is neat about EPDM is that EPDM comes with workflows in it. It's part of EPDM, um, and these workflows, as you can see here, you know, you can kind of like have a work in progress that travels for approval, down to pending approval, it can go back, it can go forward, we all kind of like understand how these diagrams kind of like work, right, to, to follow through uh, with these um, scenarios. And with EPDM, you can have a big workflow like this uh, that can be unlimited how big it gets. It can also be small workflows. Uh, you might use workflows in here, like I talked about earlier, you can control all kinds of different documents inside of EPDM. It don't just have to be your CAD data. So you can really control auto processing, project, production, inspection, and then you can link these workflows together too. So you have this whole control over this. Now, a simple production workflow, and this is the basic one that comes with EPDM when you, when, when you install it, uh, could just be as simple as this here. And, and this is the one I'm just going to kind of like send a document through in a few seconds so you can kind of like see how it works. So we're going to start out with a document that's going to be under editing, right? And then it's going to be made a change to it. Uh, Kevin is our engineer, and he's going to be, be asked to make a change to the document. When he made that change, he's going to submit it for approval. At that point, when it gets through approval, Gary, who is the manager, is going to be logging in. He's going to be notified, and he's going to take a look at Kevin's changes. And if he likes it, then he's going to approve it. Uh, if you don't like it, then he could send it back. But in our case, of course, he's going to like it. He's going to send it approved, and then it gets down to this approved state. So it's a way to control that things kind of like follows the way that you want things to be done in your company. But not only that, we can actually control who can see what when. So maybe we don't want manufacturing to be able to see anything in the documents until it gets to approved state. They don't even know that all this stuff is going on on top of this. Um, and, and again, it's all done right inside of in, uh, Windows Explorer. So it is really easy to work with and, and, and 
use. So let me show you here how it kind of like a, a typical scenario could be. So let me just jump out of, of the PowerPoint here. And uh, let me go in here. So you can see here, this is uh, Windows, standard Windows Explorer, right? So I'm going to log in as Kevin. So I'm going to log into my vault. And again, this is uh, a secure login. So if you don't, uh, if you don't, type in the right thing, you're going to be prompted that you cannot log in. So that's one of the things we have is user control. When I log in as Kevin, I actually get a notification down here. Um, and if I open this up, we get it up with an email message. This can actually also be tied into your, to your Outlook. But check this out. I actually get in here some email from Gary, the manager, telling me to please change the overall length on a part from 250 to 350. Now I'm going to go ahead here and open up this drawing. So I'm just going to click on it here. And as I open up uh, this drawing here, it's going to be prompted uh, up with my um, EPDM um, check out and check in document. So check, so look at this here. You can see here's the, the drawing that I, that I clicked on. But look down here. It actually brought in the, the, uh, the part two. Because anybody who uses SolidWorks knows that the drawing is not worth much without the part. SolidWorks EPDM knows this, so it has this intelligence in it where it says, hey, do you want to take ownership of the drawing and do you also want to take ownership of the part, making sure that nobody messes around with it while you're working on it. Um, so, you know, this is how easy it is to work with it. I mean, it makes sense, right? And you haven't even you know, maybe seen EPDM before. So literally, I'm taking ownership of both the drawing and the part here, and I'm going to open that up uh, inside of my SolidWorks. We get the, the drawing up here uh, of this spreader arm. So we can see here that we had an overall length of 250. I'm going to go ahead and double click here, and we're going to change that to 350. Let me rebuild my document so we can see the changes here. Um, and also, I just want to point out, if you look down here at the title block, just be aware of that we are on Rev A, and also be aware of that we, at this point, don't have engineering approval. Uh, now, as I'm in here in SolidWorks, you will like to see that I got my EPDM add-in over here too. So this is really neat about EPDM. Not only does it work with, with right inside of Windows, uh, but it actually also has this really neat uh, add-in into to SolidWorks. So we can work with this right in, at this point here. So I have made my change, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to check it back into the vault. I'm going to say, all right, I changed my part here. I'm done with it. I'm going to check it back into the vault. I can maybe put a note in here, that would be kind of nice, right? Um, to kind of like capture this um, uh, for later documentation, right? So I'm going to check this document in, and now I have made my change. But not only that, now when I have checked this document in, I can also now send it on in the workflow. Because right now, as we're sitting in here, we are we have just made the change under editing, editing here, the, the, from 250 to 350. Now we can submit it. So what I'm going to do right in from SolidWorks is I'm just going to go over here and say that I would like to submit for approval. And as soon as I do that, I can put in a comment here uh, that will follow this approval. So I can say, you know, please check changes. And, uh, and hit OK. Now, uh, I actually get triggered to run Design Checker. I don't know how many people uh, uh, use Design Checker in SolidWorks. This is a SolidWorks a tool that can design for fonts and stuff like that. That's one of the other great advantages with EPDM is that as we are sending things through workflows, we can trigger all different kinds of things. So we can trigger that it's going to run the Design Checker. Many people talk about that they want to do this, but, you know, as people are busy, they kind of many times forget to do this kind of stuff. EPDM can help you with that. It can also, you know, when things, hand, uh, maybe you want when, when, when your document is approved, that automatically get a PDF printed out. Or maybe you want to uh, export an XML file to your ERP system. All these things is things that EPDM can do right within these workflows. So I'm going to check this document in, and I have sent it through the process. So I'm double my changes here, so I can actually lock I'm just close the drawing down here, and uh, let me go back in here and uh, sign out as Kevin, and then uh, we can get rid of the email here, and uh, then uh, you know further down the hall, uh, Gary locks in, the manager locks into to the vault here. 
So when Gary locks in, Gary now gets a notification. Okay? So we can go down here, we can check what he gets. Well, he gets that document that Kevin just sent through the pipeline that says, please check the changes, right? And as you can see here, again, he get a link here. You can click right here, and uh, and he can open up and, and, and check everything is good with, uh, with um, the, the, the length of the part. However, like I said before, EPDM works right inside of, of Windows. So this is Windows, right? We can see here this is a typical windows in here. Now I'm inside my vault here. One of the neat things about EPDM is not only do we have a standard folder structure like we used to, all comfortable with, but we actually with EPDM also get some more stuff. If you look down here, you would actually see that I got a little bar down here. And if I click on that drawing, we just made changes to, you will see that the eDrawing Professional that comes with every seat of, um, of EPDM uh, is right here. It gives me a quick view to look this drawing here. So I don't even have to open up SolidWorks. I actually, as a manager, maybe don't even have SolidWorks on my, my machine. I can just quickly check here, and I can say, all right, Kevin did change that document um, for, uh, from 250 to 350. That's all good. I'm happy with this. Uh, so I can actually write in from this interface here. I can also right-click, and I can go in and say that I passed the approval. Here's why you could see that I could actually send it back if I wanted to. But I'm just going to pass approval here on this document here. And, uh, you know, I might put something in like, looks great. And another thing that I get here is I actually get prompted to re-put in my password. It's like what we call like a double door system. Uh, this gives, you know, the security that Kevin don't sneak into Gary's office and just approve his own work. But, I mean, I can go ahead here and approve this document. And then, bang, now this document has been approved. We can actually see it right over here that it's set through uh, and is now down in the uh, approved state. Um, and if we look again, look at the title block here, you will actually see that it automatically revved it up, right? It was an A before. And Gary has also now been applied as a engineer, so, uh, as engineering approval from Gary. So. You know, EPDM just took care of these changes. Uh, it read the, uh, the document and it approved the document just by us, you know, controlling it this way through here. There's no running over to, to the other cubicle outside or, or, or hoping that, you know, the other person takes care of stuff. This is kind of like a proven track on how things work through this workflow. If we just want to take a quick look at, at, at these workflows here, so I showed you um, kind of like the um, the ones on the PowerPoint, it's very simple to do. Um, and, and actually, for our sake as, as, as a reseller, we really don't train the end users. Because if you're familiar with Windows, you're kind of like all set with, you know, these uh, working with these check-in, check-out. Um, when it comes to the admin side, this is really easy to work with, too. Um, here is that workflow we actually just worked with, and, and just to show you how easy it is, maybe I want to um, include a uh, an ECO process in here. So I can go in here and uh, put something in like send ECO, oh. <clears throat> hit this one here, and there you see that I get you know one of these boxes here, okay? And uh, as I'm in here, I might not want to create the transition between the two. And I can create this transition uh, right here. And I can call that, you know, um, I don't know what makes sense that. But these transition is just literally working with these block uh, like this here, right? I mean, it, it really can't uh, get much more simpler to work with, uh, with these workflows. Um, you know, it's really easy to control and work with. And also some of the things we get to do in here, if we just open up one of this transition again, you can see in here we can control who can do what, right? Remember that, that Gary was one of the ones that could, could check a, a document through. For example, Kevin couldn't. We can talk about actions um, in here, so we can add different actions too. Like I said, maybe we send an email to somebody when, when something goes through a certain transition. 
maybe we export the data out to our ERP system. Uh, we can have it uh, creating the PDFs and stuff like that. So it's really, really powerful when it comes to working with this. The things we can really control in this workflow. <clears throat> so uh, it's really easy, and and, and uh, you know it's always easy when Lars does it on the screen. Let me just show you really how easy EPDM is to work with, like out of the box, because I think that that's kind of like you know it, it can be can be a little bit difficult to kind of like wrap your head around. It. And I'm, I really look at at EPDM as putting a nice warm coat around your your windows around all your files and, and just kind of like protecting and keeping it warm, keeping it safe. And working with it is, is really easy too. So let me just show you here. If I take this and let me just let me do a Windows 7 command here and make this window a little bit smaller. If you look over here on my desktop, I have a folder full of different documents um, on my on my desktop. You will see I have some SOLIDWORKS files in here. I actually have a NC program in here. There's some 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 uh, pictures. There's all there's some DWGs. There's all different kinds of file types out here outside my my vault. Well, to bring it into EPDM, all I really do is drag and drop. I just drag it into my window here uh, with a standard Windows command. There's no fancy, no really going on. That it's straight out of the box. Drag and drop it right in there. You can see how it's just bringing the, all these files in. And when they are in here, let's maximize that again. We can double click here, and we will see that we got all these these files here, right? Um, and when I'm coming in here at this point, all I can do, and we can see we have the the, the uh, Excel files and all these different files. Really, at this point here, I can just check them all into the vault. So I'm just going to right click and say check it. When they get checked into the vault. EPDM comes up with this little box here and check this out it actually a checking relationship so it sees that yeah you're checking in this drawing to the vault but hey you didn't bring the part in the part is actually sitting outside this EPDM vault if we look down here there's even a file that is not even found on your system so just by dragging this one in EPDM is already right now checking things for us it's taking this is looking out for us and making sure that you know things get brought in that we want to bring in. Check this, hit the check in box, and now they all get, get brought in. Now what you will see in here is that all my different files, uh, you will actually see over here that we have different status over here. So this is actually the workflow like you saw before, that editing, and you will see that some of them are approved. That's because I decided that certain of these documents that I'm bringing in like PDFs and pictures I don't want them to enter through my workflow they are already taken care of I just want them to be in approved state so you even got that kind of control just by dragging the files into EPDM we are already you know controlling the process of these files we already decided that they travel through our workflow now at any point in here with all these different files, I can go in and I can take a look at them. Again, I got the preview window. So here, for example, I have a DWG drawing, right? An AutoCAD drawing. All I do is I right click and I say check out, meaning that I now take control of this. But not only not only do I do I now have it secured in the vault and, and, and EPDM have control that I have the right relationship, I actually also have intelligence in here. Um, every part in here, every file in here, I have what is called a data card. And this data card is sitting right over here. And these data cards are, are customizable for whatever companies want in here. Um, and and I've, this is pretty much straight out of the box, so I haven't really tried to do anything fancy here. But just check out the powers of this. I just dragged this AutoCAD file into SOLIDWORKS EPDM. If we look down at the title block here, I can actually go into EPDM and I can actually type in some text in here and save it and check out that on our preview we actually just re-edited that title block on that AutoCAD drawing. I don't even have to open up draft site to make these changes. So this is really where, where uh, EPDM is really powerful. Metadata is controlled even when we just drag it in 
it's controlled right there. Another thing that is, is very neat <clears throat> about these things is like I have a CNC program. This is a text file for a CNC program made completely with another, you know, another CAM package. Not anything maybe to do with SOLIDWORKS. If I take ownership of this part and I can make a copy of it, and if we go up and look at something like this file, SOLIDWORKS file up here, standard SOLIDWORKS file, what I can actually do with this SOLIDWORKS file is I can paste that CNC program on as a reference. What does that mean? Well, it means that when I go in to, to check out or check in this file, this SOLIDWORKS part connector, it automatically tells me that that CNC program is associated with that power connector. Talking about these workflows and making sure that the right people know what's going on. If there's any point is a change to this part, that project manager will also know that whoops, there's also a CNC program that needs to be changed. Right? I mean how often isn't that where many times things goes wrong? Where we kind of like stop trusting our data because you know, one thing got changed, and now we're not sure if another thing actually did get changed. Did somebody remember? Did Bob remember? Did, you know, Frank remember? This case here, it follows the document. It's attached to it. So you got this intelligent right on the spot. So not only <clears throat> can you talk about, you know, how you can improve things through a workflow, but you can actually also talk about how when you bring new data into EPDM, how you quickly can attach that and bring it along with that workflow. So it's really, really easy to use and, and, and really powerful to, to, to do that, that kind of stuff, even if, it, if it's already set up or if it's, it's a new user here. You know, we, we got control over, over these files, right, just by dragging it in. So just to taking a quick look here with these with how we can kind of like approve documents through our workflow, how we can, can control it. And that's really why you many times see this specific picture um, with us here at Cat Dimensions is because EPDM is that vault, is that controlling factor for our design, for our assembly destructions, for our analysis, for FEA and sustainability. EPDM is that tool that can take you hundreds of thousands of files make sure that people follow a workflow that, that maybe, you know, some companies haven't even had a chance to really set that up or draw it up, but it's there. Making sure that the communication works and, and when you approve something, you approve the workflow, that, that's how we do things from that point on. So just kind of like to, to, to recap here, so we talked about getting your data in order, right? I mean, all these hundreds, thousands of files floating around, we can take that with EPDM, you know, very cost efficient and control that data. Finally, you know, we don't have these overflowing um, file cabinets with folders flying, flying around, data flying around, files flying around. We can control it with our own customized workflows. Again, you can make as many workflows as you want. You can link them together. You can start out with something very simple to start with and you can just build on it and just set your process up. As your company grows, EPDM will grow with you. Notifications. Just the point that you don't have to chase people around anymore. Email notifications goes back and forth. If you make a change to, to a part, people get notified. Maybe it gets taken away from the manufacturing floor so they don't run it by mistake. That's the kind of stuff you do. And then finally, the ease of use. EPDM is, you know, it's a warm, nice coat around your your cold Windows file structure that is, you know, uh, not very secure and not very well organized. It, it's easy to use. I said it earlier, we really don't, the end users, we really don't, you know, the training program is very simple because if you know Windows, it's really easy to use, um, to use EPDM. And, you know, I think the, the, the proof is with how many of our customers who is already on the EPDM uh, wagon, how, how that have improved them to really get along. Because you get your data, and you structure your data, you, you control how it travels through, and you just, you just have to be more efficient. You just, you know, there's no more uh, discussion about did I make that part, did you make that part, and stuff like that. It's really, 
It's really set uh, as a, a, a management program to just make sure that all your files are on the right path. So I hope, I don't want to take too much of people's time. I hope you really got a little bit out of here seeing how this can be structured through. Again, my name is Lars. And if you got any questions, please don't hesitate. Send me an email, Lars at catdimensions.com. If you have any questions, contact us. Uh, you can contact us at any of our offices. We're more than happy to ask any questions. Anything you didn't see here that you wanted to see, you know, call us. Let us get, have the opportunity to show you really how this product can uh, can help you because it's really a product that that has a, you know a, a great advantage to have. So again, thank you for attending. Um, I hope that uh, you got something out of it. And don't forget if you didn't catch Kevin's webinar earlier. You know, catch it uh, online. And uh, thank you so much.